Oh, hello, YouTube. Today in the Naughty Librarian, I am bringing you a big book haul. Why not? I don't try to collect so many books, but like they all just show up at the same time. <laughs> so here we are, a bunch of books. Let's go. This is what I've recently gathered. So first like group of books here. These are all sent to me by the publisher. So I have like a few cool books that like I want to talk about for a minute. First things first, I have On the Hustle by Adriana Herrera. I am so excited for this one. I really, really, really liked the previous book of this. Um, I think it's called Here to Stay, also sent to me by the publisher. So when I saw they had the next book, I'm like, please send this to me. And they're like, okay. So I was like, thank you, Harlequin. <laughs> so they sent it to me. They're so sweet. And um, I really like Adriana Herrera's writing. I've read several things by this author now and like they are perfect me time books. Like they are great for like, oh, I have like a whole afternoon to myself. I'm gonna grab a wine, I'm gonna grab like the corner of the couch and I'm just gonna like relax and read a fun book. Like that's these. They're just perfect like kind of fun me time books. So this one's about Alba. She has just peak oldest sister energy. She's obviously taking care of everybody. She has like a demanding family. She has a demanding boss. She's like a personal assistant to this guy, Theo, who's like an Olympic swimmer. He's also like the heir to like a real estate fortune. Like he's that guy. And he's just like demanding and like, I don't know, cold. And she's like, ugh, whatever. And then like, finally she gets this big opportunity for herself. So she's like, you know what, I'm putting myself first, I'm gonna take it. So she moves to Dallas away from her like needy family, away from Theo, her boss, who's kind of a dick. She's like, I'm going to Dallas. So she gets there. And what did you know who follows her? Theo, her old boss, he shows up. He's like, hey, hey, hi, I miss you. <laughs> like one of those, all of a sudden he's being real nice. And she's like, what's this about? And he's like, there's a reality like, um, TV home remodeling, home decorating show, and he wants her to like work on it with him. I don't know all the details of that, but like, I don't care. I'm still gonna love this probably. And it's like their relationship. It does make me nervous that it's like a boss assistant, but um, like, I don't know. It depends on the power dynamics here. I think with like a personal assistant, it might be a little different of a power dynamic than like in a corporate environment. So I don't know, especially with like how the internet is right now. And we've all heard of like the Try Guys drama. So like, I don't know, it, it might be like too on the nose at the moment, but um, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. It's Adriana Herrera. I trust her to do me well with this. I think I'm gonna have a good time. It's gonna be a good cozy read. I'm gonna drink some wine, have me time. I'm gonna enjoy this. Also sent to me by the publisher, I have The Women of Troy by Pat Barker. And I'll be honest with you, I did not request this. I don't know why it showed up at my house, <laughs> but here it is. Um, thank you for sending it to me. It does sound kind of cool because it's kind of like a reimagining of the Iliad. And like, I went through a whole Greek classics like moment on this channel earlier this year where I did like a lot of it. So may maybe that's related to why this was sent to me, but this is kind of a feminist reimagining of the Iliad. So we're following all of these individual women from the story who maybe had smaller like pieces. All of them were kind of, you know, banding together to get like revenge. And I was like, okay, like I'm kind of vibing with it, honestly. I did not request it. It just kind of showed up, but I'm like not mad that it did. <laughs> Cause it does sound kind of cool actually. I did go through a whole like Greek classics phase. So maybe that's why I have it. But um, yeah, there's a lot of people like kind of, um, a lot of women banding together to get revenge on the, you know, uh, the invading force because Troy lost the Trojan War and like, oh boy, things haven't gone well for them. So it's kind of the women picking up the pieces. And by picking up the pieces, I mean, they are joining forces to take revenge. And like, I'm like into that. Why not? Let's have a revenge -y story. Sent to me by Penguin Teen, I got The Woods Are Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins. I believe this just got released into paperback and they're like, hey, do you want it? I'm like, yeah, I wanted to read this actually. So here we are. And I haven't really read anything by, by Stephanie Perkins, I don't think, but this is kind of like thriller, horror related. And I did always have it on my radar, something like I wanted to try out. So this is kind of like a survival, a uh, story in the woods. We have these two friends. They were best friends all throughout high school. And um, now uh, 
they were at the the cusp of going off to college so they're they're gonna be separated for the first time so they're trying to take this weekend of like hiking in the woods together this is like their big last hurrah and um things don't go as planned there are predators in the woods that probably aren't bears is probably something much spookier so they have to like survive against spooky woods stuff <laughs> like that's all i really know but like i don't know i'm interested in it i want to see like how like this author deals with like building tension and i which i feel is so important especially like in a thriller you need to have me like going oh my god what's gonna happen like i need to feel tense with the book i don't want to just like be calm i need to be tense with it so i'm excited to try this one out and just like kind of see what the writing style is like oh my goodness gracious also sent to me from penguin teen and I was so excited, is Chaos and Flame by Tessa Gratton and Justina Ireland. This doesn't come out until March 2023, so it's still like a while away. But like, oh my gosh, I freaking love Justina Ireland. So like, I already wanted to buy this. And they're like, hey, do you want the ARC? I'm like, heck yeah, I do. <laughs> so I got it and I'm very excited about it. And like, it's such an ARC, like the blurb on the back is so like, nothing but like honestly this is an author by i know tessa gratton has written written other books i've read i believe um she wrote queens of Innisleer, which is like good but very slow so like i do want to see something else by the author maybe a little quicker paced and with especially with justina ireland who's just incredible and writes such good like horror <laughs> that i'm like what's this gonna be like it's kind of fantasy um we have people who have to come together to change the world. Very YA fantasy tropes here. Um, opposites attract. And um, it's going to be interesting. There's a little bit of romance in here. And I'm just really excited. Like, honestly, I just knew Justina Ireland was putting out another book and I was going to get it. Sight unseen. I didn't care what it was about. I was going to get it. And so now I have it. And like the whole blurb on here is only like two sentences. <laughs> So there's a prophecy, there's sworn enemies, there's an orphan, and they're out on revenge for the murder of their family. There's um, a war prince who despises war, and this is a land of endless violence. And the only option is to embrace the, you know, the chaos of this world and uh, maybe join forces and ignite this revolution. So chaos and flame, that kind of thing. And uh, I mean, these are all like well-trodden tropes for YA fantasy, but I don't care. I love Justina Ireland books. So thank you very much, Penguin Teen. I'm very happy to have this. All of these books right here were all pre-orders that just came in. So very excited about them. And uh, speaking of Justina Ireland, I also got my copy of Rust in the Root. <laughs> I'm like, I pre-ordered this the second I heard it was coming out. I had no idea what it was about. I didn't care. Justina Ireland wrote it. I was going to buy it. And I'm so happy. So like, oh my goodness. Okay, so this is like, again... Her Bread and Butter, which is like alternate history, uh, United States, maybe sci-fi fantasy kind of story. This one's more fantasy. I think her other stuff may have been more sci-fi. But um, this one is in like the Great Depression era. And we're following a young mage. She is going off into the city to look for work, you know, you know, continue on her mage training. She gets an internship and the internship quickly turns into like a detective kind of story. They have to find the bad guy and stop them from like wreaking havoc in magic because magic has always existed. It's kind of an alternate history of the United States because magical arts have just always been. So like what would the United States look like if magic was like a reality? So I love that. I uh, So many things about this book are just going to be incredible. I, I'm just so happy. <laughs> I have all this Justina Ireland stuff in my life right now. Another one of my pre-orders that arrived that I'm so excited for is Daphne by Josh Mallerman. I am obsessed with this. Um, I'm going to be reading this in October. So excited. And I've recently realized what this book is. And I've been calling it Bloody Carrie because it's a combination of Bloody Mary and Carrie. So like Bloody Carrie. And I'm like obsessed with that like description. <laughs> So it's kind of like, think like 80s teen slasher movie, um, but like I think modern times and there's this spirit that you can, you know, invoke a la Bloody Mary. And it is of Daphne, who is a, a vengeful spirit of a girl who was bullied a la Carrie. So um, it, it think that vibe. And frankly, I don't need to know anymore. 
That's all I need to know. Josh Mallerman wrote it. I'm a big Josh Mallerman fan. So like, obviously I pre-ordered this. I didn't care what it was about. <laughs> this is an author buy. So yes, very excited. Um, definitely it's going to have slasher vibes, maybe some like ghosty stuff. And I'm so pumped for this. It's like the perfect like Halloween vibes read. I'm so excited. It's going to be so fun. Another pre-order that arrived is Demon in the Wood by Lee Bardugo and Danny Pendergast. So this is like um, a prequel to the Grishaverse. It's a graphic novel. This one is kind of all about the Darkling and the Darkling's backstory. Like how the Darkling became the Darkling. And I'm really hoping this is good. Like the art is incredible. I'm very excited to read this. Also, there's an audiobook which is insane because it's a graphic novel so i'm very interested in this audiobook because i like i pre like i requested it from the library i want this audiobook just because i've never had like a graphic novel with an audiobook so this is gonna be cool like i'm very excited for that and it's like the darkling story i think it's gonna definitely be dark i know sorry for the pun but like it's gonna be dark it's gonna be gritty it's gonna be just like so cool. I don't know. I'm just so excited. Ah. I could keep going on and on a bunch, but like ugh, the art is so good and it's going to be so fun. So yeah, it's, it's Grisha verse. It's a, it's a prequel. There's, there's not a lot to tell about it, but yeah, as soon as I knew it was coming out, it's going to pre, like I wasn't going to pre-order this. Have you met me? <laughs> also pre-order that came in is the Golden Enclaves by Naomi Novik. So this is the finale to the Skullamance series. Mind you, the Skullamance series is a lot. Um, like think of it as like a dark comedy where things are funny because they're fucked up. And that's the point. No one thinks these are okay things to do. There's a lot of like humor in here that's just like, oh no, and that's the whole point. Um, Cause we have this girl, Elle, she is, um, <laughs> she basically, she is not necessarily a bad person, but her magic, oh boy, does she have some evil magic that's just inherent to her. So like, it's her getting put in these awkward situations, but also it's about this school, the Skullamance for like magical learning. And this isn't, you know, um, a, a pleasant magical school full of like whimsy. No, this is like devil magic school where like it's full of literal monsters that eat children. Like, people get eaten in this. Like, it's a bad, it's a bad school. <laughs> there you go. Like, you have to worry about so many types of monsters just literally trying to eat you. And after the big, like, cliffhanger finale of book two of this series, I have been dying for this one to find out what's going to happen. Big developments in that book. What's going on here? So yes, very excited. I want the big conclusion of it. I have been really enjoying this series so far. Another pre-order. I have Nona the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. So this is continuing on this uh, Locked Tomb series. Um, its predecessors were Gideon the Ninth and Harrow the Ninth. Gideon the Ninth is a masterpiece. I love it so much. It's so good. Harrow is weird. Like it's so weird. But like, it's good. Like it has so many good things in it, but it makes not always the most sense. I'll be honest with you. There you go. So um, I do want to continue on and go with Nona and see what's going on here. What's going on here with Nona? I mean, it looks silly again. Like she's wearing a shirt with a burger on it. She has a dog friend. There's like skeleton bones. Like what's happening here? And I'm just like, I'm really obsessed with it. It's um, we're following this girl, Nona. Um, it, I'm not even going to get into all the weird stuff that happened in Harrow, but it is related to that. And she just wants to have a birthday party, but of course she can't because, you know, there's zombies and like the world's falling apart, but she just wants to have a birthday party. So it's very absurd just going in and like, I don't know, I'm pretty excited about it. It's got like lovely art on it. Like the end pages are gorgeous. Um, it does have like a one little thing on the front. I definitely think they're worth reading. I mean, the most common description you get for like Gideon the Ninth, the beginning of the series, is lesbian necromancers in space, which is accurate, but like, kind of. <laughs> like, I don't know. They're definitely necromancers. They're in space, um, and they're lesbians, but I wouldn't call it a romance. Like, some people think it might be a romantic, and I, I don't necessarily see it as a romance. I see it more of like a friendship, but whatever um yeah but there you go let's be necromancers in space if that like sounds fun it probably is <laughs> last book is not a pre-order 
or anything. It's just like a book. Um, there was a book signing and my friend wanted to go. So I said, okay, I'll go. And I wasn't necessarily going to buy this book unless I went to the signing. So I, I am excited to try it out. And that is A Merry Little Meat Cute by Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone. And it's like a holiday story. Um, it is a smutty book. It has Sierra Simone writing it. She writes smutty books. So there you go. But Julie Murphy is mainly known for like YA stories. So I'm like, how are these two going to blend their writing styles together? But I am excited. Like after going to the signing and hearing them speak about the book, I am more excited about it. It's definitely gonna be a fun Christmas read. But essentially, there is this woman, she is, um, she's a plus size um, adult entertainer. She maybe has like, um, I don't, I don't think they call it OnlyFans in the book, but something like that in this world. And, um, you know, she's like a model, <laughs> we'll say. And then she somehow gets cast in like, like a Hallmark movie, Hallmark Christmas movie with this guy who used to be in a boy band, like the bad boy of a boy band. And like, who oh boy, does he know who she is? She, He's a subscriber. So like, ooh, and they have to try not to bang each other, but like, they're gonna bang each other. And it's Christmas. <laughs> So I'm, I'm very excited about it. I think it might be really fun. Definitely has like a lot of rom-com vibes. I think both of these authors get along so well as friends and they were funny and charming during the book signing. So like, I don't know, I have like a lot more hope for this one. It wasn't a book that I was like necessarily super into, but now after like being at the book signing, I have a lot more interest in reading. So I am excited about it. Nice little signed book. And yeah, there you go. Merry Little Meet Cute. All right, so that was just a few books I've picked up recently. I pre-order a lot of books. It's like a thing, <laughs> but like, it's good. Pre-orders do help like authors in their sales. So like I do it, it's my small part of, you know, helping books succeed. But also I'm just like, I want it now. And like, I just pre-order it because then I don't have to think about it. It'll just come to me when it's ready. <laughs> so I do that a lot, but um, yeah, got a lot of cool stuff. Some stuff from the publisher, some stuff I've pre-ordered. But yeah, a lot of good books. Let me know in the comments down below. Um, what's a book that you weren't super interested in reading when you heard about it, but you've changed your mind since because you've learned more things about it? What was that book for you? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. If you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And if you want cool exclusive content, including a book club, you can consider becoming a channel member or a patron. The links for that are in the description down below. And on that note, I will see you guys soon. Bye!